Hi guys, my name is Gronya and this is my channel Jungle Flowers Canada. Thank you so much for joining me. So today is going to be a chore day guys. I have some plants that I need to up pot and I also got beautiful pots from my husband for Christmas and I was trying to think what to put in it so I'm actually going to bunch together some of my skindapsis and I've made a new location for it in my family room and I've actually ordered a new light. And then I also want to show you my prop boxes downstairs. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll actually put the name of my Instagram here. There is a link um, on my banner if you ever want to find it. It's just of the same name, jungle.flowers.canada. I put some pictures of my prop box up and I'm so excited because there were a few surprises there. So it's going to be a very casual video and there's no real structure to it. Just a couple of chores I need to do, but I thought you might like to join me. So I now have the task of taking my asparagus fern down and it is actually now like wrapping across my mirror. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you will have seen it. But I know it needs to be repotted because some of the leaves are turning yellow. It's hard for me to keep it moist. So I thought I would up pot it into a plastic pot because at the moment I have it planted directly into a concrete pot. Now I know it might be a little bit hard for you to see. Actually, let me turn off the lamp. Does that make it easier? I know it's very dark now, but here is my asparagus fern and she goes all the way across here. But there is some browning, which I'm upset about here. So actually I need a stool. Let me go get a stool so I can take down this hanger and then we're going to get this baby down to the basement. Okay, so we're down in the basement. I'm knackered. In other words, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Um, so anyway, I am just going to put on my gloves and here I have, actually let me get rid of this pot here, here I have my asparagus fern. Now, a problem I encounter is I don't have a lot of nursery pots that are big enough for upsizing. I'm going to have to invest in some. But if you've been following me, you'll know I've been one of those naughty plant parents that actually plant directly into pots. I don't always plant into nursery pots. The reason being, I am not a heavy waterer. If you're a heavy waterer, I do not recommend this, okay? So let's try and get, I'm actually gonna put it into a terracotta pot, which will be, obviously have a drainage hole this time, but I, you know, I don't always do that. So now we have to navigate the asparagus fern and try and get it out of this macrame holder. So let me just, oh. and by the way, asparagus fern have thorns on them. So you've got to be very careful when you're handling them. They look so, like it looks so whimsical, but uh, believe me, it's not as whimsical as it looks. So how do I, I have to put my glasses on. Because, okay. I don't want to damage it too much, but I suspect I will lose some greenery in the process. So you may notice guys, well, I mean, you can't see my, my hair now, but I actually got my hair coloured and I've gone more blonde. I used to go blonde like when I was in my 40s and then um, I started just let, uh, going back to my natural colour. So my actual hair colour is very, very dark. I, when, I was, um, when I was a child, I had like, really black hair. My mum said people used to comment that my hair was so black. And I'm fortunate that I don't have a lot of gray, so I don't actually really need to color my hair, but, you know, it's nice to do stuff for yourself to make yourself feel a little bit better. These macrame hangers, I should mention, I buy them from Amazon and I love them. They are super cheap and I love the simplicity of them. Um, so they're not competing with your plant. And um, I will see if I can find a uh, link for them and I, I think you get like six of them or eight of them for like twenty dollars or something like that so they're very very cheap let me show them to you nothing to them they're very basic they're just like a jute cord but I like them because as I say they're very simplistic so we have the plant out <laughs> it's stuck in there guys Oh my lord. 
because it's a concrete pot too, it may be that the roots have attached to the side. So I'm just going to use my handy dandy little uh, plant tool here to see if I can get it away from the sides. Aha, we got her. Okay, so can you see the roots on there? And look at all the tubers. Oops. Yeah, she's ready. So I'm going to use this terracotta pot. So you can see it's a good bit bigger and it will give her room to grow. So I just put some soil on the bottom so I can get it to the right height. Let's check that one out. When I have them hanging in macrame, I find it's best to leave a bigger gap from the top of the plant to the soil because it's hard to see what you're doing and quite often you can overfill it and the water can spill out the sides. So I'm going to tr plant it just a little bit lower than I would normally plant, just to avoid making a mess. I might just go in a little tiny bit higher, but not a lot. Okay, there, so I've like about a half an inch from the top. My soil has a little bit of everything in it. I throw, if I have little bits of leca left over, I throw them in. If I have little bits of pond left over, I throw it in. So it is a an air, very airy soil, soil mix, which I find is probably, for most plants, it works well. Now, ferns do like to be kept moist, but I just have to make sure I keep watering it um, to keep the moisture in. I think oh, I think this will be gorgeous now because it will probably even get larger. And by having it in a bigger pot, I'm hoping I won't get so many of these dead fronds. I hope she's going to like this now. This is like, I just love this plant. I got one for my daughter and hers, her house is just amazing, guys. She has massive big windows. Did I just break that? I just broke it, guys, did I? Oh no, I didn't. I thought I broke it. She has amazing windows. She she lives in an old farmhouse and her windows are, oh, what did I just do there? Oh my God, you silly woman. See what I did? I put it through there. Okay, let's, let's fix that. I thought that was a, an opening, but it's not. But anyway, hers, she has hers in her upstairs bathroom and it is magnificent. Someday I will do a tour of her, her house. Oh my God, guys, I am so envious of her. Her windows are just incredible and she has every aspect. She has big windows in every single aspect. They almost touch the ground, her windows. So if you'd like to see her plants, she doesn't have as many as me, of course but what she has are beautiful. So if you'd like to see that, let me know in the comments and I'll ask her if we can go up and do a video. As always, guys, I have Super Thrive in the water down here. So I'm just gonna give it a really nice watering before I bring it upstairs. We let it sit. Oh, it's unsteady. See, the water's all spilling. The water's all spilling. Oh, let's put it there for the moment. And let's get on to our next project. So what's next? Now I've made a mess here, so I'm going to put my tray in. Kieran bought me, and Kieran is my hubby, if you're new here, bought me these lovely pots for Christmas. He bought me round ones and he bought me rectangular ones. So I have a couple of different types of skin dasses. And I, oops, I probably got muck on my forehead now. And I have them, um, some of them in my IKEA greenhouse and some in my wooden greenhouse. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pot them all up together in palm. Now, three of them are already in palm, one of them is in soil, so I'm hoping the one in soil doesn't have an adverse reaction to it. But basically, you have your, your pot here, and then you have your base, and it's self-watering, and it has a little peep pole there, so you can see when you need to water. So what color? It's going into my family room. So I think I'm gonna go with the neutral color because I have a lot of woods in that room. 
Oh, and there is also a wick. Let me get the wick out. This is one of the, um, I was going to say the newer type skin dapsis. This is one of the newer to come to our market. But for the life of me, I do not know which one it is. That's the thing with skin dapsis, isn't it, guys? Unless you're, you know, very au fait with what's going on. <laughs> They sometimes can't tell them apart. But what I will do is I will try and look up what it is. And if I can't, I'll ask my friend Tatum because we ordered these together from Indonesia. But I know it's not an Argerius. Okay, so um, some of you may know what it is from there. But it looks very like an Argerius, but I know it isn't an Argerius. Oh, wrong pot. So let's empty that in there. And let's take a look. So there's lovely roots on that. So let's try and get, I will rinse this under the tap. Okay, so I got all the soil off that one. And then the other three, as I say, are in pond. So this is, if you watched my video where I imported the Scandapsis tricolor, there was not a leaf on this. It was like so dead looking. But because I organized the import, I, you know what, I just kind of felt I should take the ugliest one <laughs> so I did but you can see now it has new leaves on it and I'm assuming it has nice roots let's take a look and uh, again they're like there's they're all so similar but let's hope as they mature I'll be able to see the difference okay Ooh. oh I must have had oh yes they did actually come with two pieces and there are new leaves coming on that as well so I have two pieces of this so that's cool so let's put you here and here we have my skin dapsis moonlight guys I've had this plant for over a year well over a year and I don't have great luck with the moonlight if anybody else or if anybody can give me any tips like it's fine but it should be bigger by now and uh, I found when I put it in pond it started to do better to be honest so let's take my moonlight out. Oh, so my moonlight is very well rooted. Have a look there, guys. Fantastic. So there's my moonlight. And then this one. Oh gosh, it could be Silver Hero or something like that. Oh, I'm spilling water. So I will look up what this one is. And let's have a look at the roots on this one. So you can see they all have beautiful roots, guys. Beautiful. Uh, by the way, I know I say guys all the time. I can't help it. My daughter always says to me, Mom, stop saying guys on your videos. And I just can't help it. So I used to be conscious of it before. And now I, I'm just not even, I don't even pay attention to it anymore. Okay, so I'm going to put the wick through the bottom here. Oh, I have some news for you too, guys. So I lost my beautiful miniature schnauzer, Leroy, in October, around Thanksgiving, and I was so devastated, and I miss him so very much. And I know Penny really misses him as well. Penny's looking so cute, by the way. She got groomed yesterday. So um, I, miss him, I miss him terribly. So I had been looking at them online, and... Um, my kids were like, no, dad likes a big dog. Let dad get a big dog. Because we always had big dogs. And I'm like, no, I am not having another shedding dog. I adore dogs. And I, endo I adored my shedding dogs. But I am like, not getting another shedding dog. And there's a lot of reasons why. But the, the, one of the main reasons is because I have arthritis. I have spoken about it before. And I am not able to vacuum every day anymore. So I'm like, no, the kids are giving out to me. So anyway, we decided then we wouldn't get any dog. But I had been looking at the miniature schnauzers online and I was like, oh my God, they're so gorgeous. And on my birthday, I had seen this just cute little sweetheart. And I just said to my husband on my birthday, you know what I'd love for my birthday? And he's like, what? He's expecting something planty, which I did get planty stuff as well. I said, I'd love another miniature schnauzer. And he went, okay. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so shocked I'm like yes well I was on that I can tell you so the little guy I had been looking at I, e I emailed his owner and she said yes she he was still available and he's and the lady that I'm buying them buying him off of 
Oh my gosh, guys, she was so lovely. We Zoom called. She showed me here. I stop. I should talk about this first. So let's mix up the two that are kind of are argerious looking. Do you get what I'm saying? So let's put the moonlight here. And then we'll put, because this is small and the moonlight is a little bit bigger, let's stick, this is the tricolor. Let's, oh, what did I just do there? What is that? Where did you come from? I think that came from the silver one. So let's put the tricolor beside the moonlight. And then we'll put, which I think might be the silver hero, there. You're not going to see the tricolour for some time. And then this one, which could be, I don't know. Here we have my Skindapsis pot. It's very messy. So here we have, can you see here? We have the little water gauge. So let's give this baby a good watering. And you can see it's filling up, so it'll tell you when you need to add more water. Let's just see another little bit of root exposed there. Now, next up. So in my ensuite, I have this philodendron heart leaf. And it's in these pots, which I do like, but do you know what? They're so hard to keep moisture that I'm, I'm going, I've decided I'm going to pot the three of them together. So this is a Marble Queen pathos. And... Here I have a neon pathos. So I'm going to put, pot them all up together and put them on. So in my bathroom I have top, I have upper shelving and I hang them on the upper shelving. Um, I'm going to try it in here. This isn't actually that much, it isn't really, it's not going to be bigger, but I have trouble retaining moisture. And this is actually one of the pots I used for my self-watering pots. So I actually filled the hole in at the bottom. But again, I will stress guys, I am a good waterer in that I don't overwater. So it shouldn't be too big a problem for me. Okay, let's take action. my asparagus fern, which is now covered in soil. So let's take a look at the roots on these and see how they're doing. Oh, I just broke all the roots. That was smart. Are the roots stripping? No, they're fine. Did I, or maybe there weren't that many. No, actually there weren't that many roots on it. Like there were some, I broke some of the roots, but it's not actually root bound. I think it's just these pots, they're hard to keep moisture in. Sorry guys, I just had to take a phone call there. Let's take out my philodendron, my hearty philodendron. Okay, so. So you can see, I don't know if you can see how dry the soil is, and I seem to be always watering them. I think I'm just damaging the roots here as well. Okay, so we have a lot more roots on the hardly philodendron. Yeah, they're going to work fine actually in this pot. So, there's also lights on top of my cupboards, so that also means they dry out quicker than they would normally. There we go. So let's position them. So I'm going to have them hanging over the top of my cupboard. So I want it to look pretty. How are we doing there? That looks cute, right? There's two cuttings of the, the Marble Queen. So let's just... These were just cheap little small pots that I bought you know, maybe a year or two ago. Um, they should be better rooted than this now. So I do think, like, look, can you see how dry that soil is? So this hopefully will keep them a little bit moister because they were, they were actually just starting to look scraggly and I want it to be a much fuller plant. This is what I love about um, that's Gondapsis. What are these? The Epipremnums, the Pothos and the Philodendron is they really give lovely shape to an area and very inexpensively. So, you know, Hoyas are such so slow growers and they're a little bit more expensive. So we like to take a little bit more care of our Hoyas where these guys are so cheap. Um, 
and they really give a bang for their buck, don't they? I have a huge um, marble queen, like I'm talking about gigantic marble queen pathos in my bedroom and um, actually that needs to be repotted as well because it's I'm getting a couple of brown leaves so I think it's very root bound. So there we go. That's looking good. I think that will be very pretty and hopefully the leaves will get a little bit bigger now. I'll also give this a watering. So remember those little thorns I told you that are on the asparagus farm? Well, they caught onto my slipper and I just knocked it over. But actually, it's fine. So, my prop box, guys. <gasps> my frickin' turned over my prop box when I tripped on the asparagus farm. <laughs> and I spilled some of the pawn. No. Oh, Lord. Sometimes I am so awkward. I am the most awkward person God ever put on this earth. And I, I seem to always trip or, you know, at the most inconvenient moment. All right, I moved my asparagus fern because I know I'm going to do that again. So here we have the Heuschgeliana cutting that I just got recently from my friend Paula. This is the polyneura that my daughter's puppy bit off at Christmas. So that is that. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I tipped over some stuff here. This is my new Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost that I bought from Paula for Christmas. And can you see the roots on there? It's doing beautifully. Here are those little cuttings. If you remember when I did the plant swap, when I did the plant swap with Amy, we, she sent me three little seedlings and I have them here. There's two. And this is the third one. So there's two in here. And this is, hmm, this is my mysterious gal. I think, you know what, I think it might be that um, alocasia that I imported recently. Uh, I'll get the name of it, but well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm actually not 100% sure what this is. If anybody knows, can you let me know? But anyway, there's three little bulbs in here. So I think it is an alocasia. Um, and one of them has sprouted this leaf. So I'm very excited about that. But this, guys. Look at this. <laughs> My alocasia, Jacqueline. So I thought it was done -er. I thought it was gone. And I thought, oh, you know what, I'll just stick it in my prop box anyway and see. Because it did have, like, um, a nice, you know, not a bad leaf when it arrived. And I am so excited. And there's actually another new little growth point coming out the side there. So I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, my <laughs> journey continues with my philodendron tiger tooth ring of fire. So I've had this for almost a year and a half. So it, it was nothing. I didn't even know what it was. It was just a stump. And then it put out this tiny baby. It's taking its sweet time. I still don't see any roots, but I have time. I'm just gonna leave it in here until it's bigger and then we'll see what I'm gonna do with it. Um, this here is from my Scandapsis Cleopatra and I just happened to knock that leaf off and, but like it is like well rooted in there. And I love this, the Cleopatra. And this here has little bulbs in it, which I have no idea what they are, as does this one here. So these, these are my surprise plants. I, in fact, quite often I never know what's in half of them. Was this another surprise plant? Yes, this is obviously another surprise plant. But you know what, I just leave them. And if something comes of them, great. Oh, there's, what's this here? That looks like a little wet stick of something. So you know what, let's just leave that back in there. Maybe I did, oh gosh, my memory is, it? and I, I should be writing on them what they are, shouldn't I? Okay, I'm just gonna, I spilled some pond down here, so I'm just gonna cover this up. This is a little wet stick, it could be a mame. I know I had trouble with my, my one of my mames. Actually, I've, I've never had luck with mames. They don't like me, for sure. So anyway, we'll just leave you in there. I can't get the root to cover. I hate when this happens, when something spills on the bottom. So I'm gonna wash the bottom of this pot because I do like them to be clean because I find if you leave water floating in the bottom, you get like fungus and, uh, 
what's that? Just, you know, the green slime on the bottom, and I don't really like that. So, okay, guys, all clean. So let's put these babies back in. So guys, I hope that wasn't too hectic for you. I'm feeling a little stressed out. I think it was a bit hectic. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you watched till the end, don't forget to put the green heart emoji in the comments. And I will see you all again soon. Take care. Have a wonderful day.